What I'd like to do is compute the quoted price for a bond on the settlement date, it'll be July 3rd here, by taking the cash price and subtracting the accrued interest. And then I'd like to show how the accrued interest that we subtract depends on the day count convention that we assume and we have three choices. My example follows John Hull with an 8% coupon bond. That 8% is a coupon rate and it is per annum. However, the bond pays semi-annually. So we call it a semi-annual bond twice per year. And specifically in this example, there's a coupon on March 1st and then six months later on September 1st. And we could keep going. Another coupon on March 1st, 2019. However, realistically, the bond will settle at some date in between the two coupon dates. That period between the coupon dates, a six-month period, is called a reference period. And in this example, it happens to be we're imagining that the bond settles on July 3rd or one day before July, the 4th of July. On the settlement date, somebody will need to calculate the interest that has accrued, that is to say the accrued interest on the bond since the last coupon date. So we'll put some numbers on that we'll put some numbers here just to show how we would get the accrued interest and specifically why the accrued interest depends on the day count convention. So I'm assuming the principal is $100. That's also called the face value or the par, a yield of 6% on the bond. And as we said, it's an 8% coupon rate and implicitly that's per annum. So that each of the each of the coupons that is paid when it is semi-annual pay is half of the 8% times 100 or $4. As mentioned, we already have a coupon. On, the coupon last coupon would be March 1st. The next coupon would be September 1st. And our settlement date is July 3rd. So that there are two basic ways to calculate the days since the last coupon and the days in the reference period, either actual or by 30-day count. And that actually gives rise to three combinations. So the actual abbreviated ACT is really straightforward as evidenced by the Excel calculation. When we're using Excel dates, which are their numeric values, the simple difference gives us the number of days between the last coupon and our settlement date. In this case, it's 124 actual days. And if I'm doing this in my head, although styles will vary, the way that I do this is I would realize that we have four months going from March to July times 30 days per month, except that uh, March has an extra day and May has an extra day. And then we're going, notice we're going in July, we're going two days in from July 1st to July 3rd. So that's another two days. At least that's how I would approach this, right? I get 120 plus the four gives me 124. The actual days, in the case of Excel, again, simple subtraction, but if we don't have Excel, we notice this is six months, or the way that I would do this, six months times 30 days each. And then I would just count each of the months that has an extra day, one for March, one for May, one for July, and one for August. And so I would get 180 plus four, 184 total days. So that's under the actual day count convention. And then we have the 30 day count convention, which assumes each month has 30 days and therefore an entire year would be 360 days. And so under that approach, you'll notice Excel has the days 360 function, but we could also mentally do it by saying six months and under the 30 day count convention, each month has 30 days and we leave it at that. So it's true, although in actuality, March has 31 days, we're only counting 30 days. And although May has 31 days, we're only counting 30 days. And then we just add the two days that we're going into July, so to speak, into July, from the first to the third, gives us the 122. In the case of the total days in the reference period from March 1st to September 1st, well, that's the easiest one here. Every month has 30 days, so this is just the six months times 30 days per month, or an even 180, right? So we can count these either actually or according to the 30-day count. 
And that gives rise to three combinations here. The first one being actual to actual day count convention. Now this is used for US Treasury bonds. And the accrued interest is really simple. It's just the fraction times the coupon amount. So for actual to actual, I'm taking the days since, which is 124, and I'm dividing by the total days actual, which is 184, and multiplying that by the $4 coupon, and I get the uh, accrued interest as we're 140 days into that reference period of just shy of $2.70. I can also go 3360 day count convention to, to uh, calculate the accrued interest. And this is actually used in U.S. corporate bonds and U.S. muni or municipal bonds. And in that case, I'm using these values here. So 120 days into the period and divided by 180 days total in the reference period. And I'm multiplying that by $4. And I get just over $2.71 for the accrued interest. And finally, a little bit of mix and match. I can do an actual slash 360 day count convention. And this is used for money market instruments. So in that case, I would be using the actual in the numerator, 124 days actual divided by 180 days in the reference period under a 360 day count or 30 day uh, count convention and multiply by the coupon. That's the fraction of the coupon. And I would get in this case, the highest amount uh, of the three, just over $2.75. And so you can see the choice of day count convention affects the accrued interest. And then so finally, I wanted to relate the accrued interest to the cash and quoted price of the bond. And that's why I have up here and left, if you're sitting for an FRM or CFA exam, this is your key formula or relationship. The cash price is equal to the quoted price plus the accrued interest. So of course that means the quoted price equals the cash price minus the accrued interest. And to make your life a little more difficult, there are some synonyms. Unfortunately, cash price has fully three synonyms. The cash price is also called the full price, the dirty price, or the invoice price. And the quoted price is also called the flat or clean, clean, clean price. So you do sometimes see these paired in terms of a, a a full versus flat price and a dirty versus clean price. I'm following whole with a cash versus quoted price. So final step here, what I've done in Excel is calculated the cash price of the bond on the settlement date, July 3rd. So I will note, because this is, can be confusing, the true present value of the bond on July 3rd is the cash price, right? So it's that's your cash price, that's your present value, or if you like, discounted cash flow value, if we're doing that sort of thing. So we could think of that as the true price, and that's why full makes a lot of sense here. Now, how I got that in Excel by using the present value calculation, but you have to do this on coupon dates. So really what I've done is calculate the present value implicitly as of the last coupon date, March 1st, and then I compounded forward at the yield. If you'd like to download the spreadsheet, see how I did that, go ahead and, and do that. But suffice it to say, that gives me an accurate cash price on the settlement date, in this case, 114.119. And then if I have that, I can simply apply our relationship to infer the quoted price, you guessed it, I just subtract the accrued interest, right? Cash price minus my accrued interest. In this example, I happen to have sort of subtracted the accrued interest according to the actual to actual. So maybe you might, it might be a good guess that I'm, I'm doing this for a US treasury bond. I wouldn't be doing this for a US corporate bond. I wouldn't be doing this for a money market instrument because of the day count convention that I'm using. But by subtracting the cash price, then I get the quoted price of just shy of $111.50. And so you can see that my quoted price, because it subtracts the accrued interest, is therefore also informed by the choice 
of my day count convention. And so that is uh, day count conventions in a nutshell. I hope that's helpful. If the video is helpful, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.